Hello everyone, here I am going to discuss a very important topic that is chronic inflammation, also known as granulomatous inflammation or tuberculosis inflammation. So, it is a topic from which you usually get long question as well as short question. So, very frequently in your university exams, you get a long question on chronic inflammation or granulomatous inflammation or tuberculosis, the pathogenesis of tuberculosis. Or sometimes you get a short question, short question on the granuloma, the pathogenesis of granuloma, definition of granuloma, types of giant cells, examples of granulomatous inflammation. So, we will be discussing all of them in a super simplified manner. So, let's start it. Let's start the topic that is, you can see, chronic inflammation also known as granulomatous inflammation chronic inflammation and granulomatous inflammation is one and the same thing whether question is coming on chronic or granulomatous you have to write the same thing so before starting the topic have a look if this question coming as a long question in your exam you are going to frame your answer in the following headings so overview is always very important students please learn the overview because you have to because you are a university you are going to appear in your university exam if you are going to appear in your competitive exam i don't stress this but you have to write your answer under following headings now you have to learn the headings so first of all tell me the introduction or definition of chronic inflammation what is chronic inflammation then start granuloma tell me the pathogenesis of granuloma tell me the definition of granuloma tell me the structure or microscopy of the granuloma then tell me the types of the giant cells then tell me the types of the granulomas and in the end we will see the examples of the granulomatous inflammation so let's start them one by one so let's start with the introduction or the definition what is chronic inflammation as the name indicate chronic inflammation it's an inflammation which is of prolonged duration as the name indicates, it's chronic it's prolonged duration so here three things takes place simultaneously number one inflammation number two tissue injury number three attempts to repair three things takes place simultaneously inflammation along with tissue injury along with attempts at repair so these three things takes place simultaneously because inflammation is too prolonged so repair also starts simultaneously on one hand there is inflammation 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 on other end there is repair because it is too prolonged that is the meaning of the chronic inflammation so three things are there inflammation injury and repair simultaneously that is chronic inflammation now start granuloma first you tell me the pathogenesis of granuloma how does the granuloma form now i assume that you have already watched my video on the acute inflammation if you have not watched please watch that this video is of chronic inflammation please watch the video on acute inflammation also in acute inflammation i told you acute inflammation takes place in 11 steps five of them are vascular events and six of them are cellular events total 11 steps 11 events are there in chronic inflammation only three steps are there Chronic inflammation is a type of, it is the mechanism is type 4 hypersensitivity. And here only three steps are there. Only three steps. Let me tell you the three steps. So as soon as any antigen enters the human body, this is a non-degradable antigen. Any non-degradable antigen. For, for example, one of the non-degradable antigen is mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium lipri, talcum powder. So any non-degradable antigen enters human body as soon as it enters. The first cell which come in contact is antigen presenting cell. So antigen presenting cell will engulf the antigen, engulf this non-degradable antigen and degrade it into multiple pieces. It will engulf, degrade it, process it and present it on the surface. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <coughs> it is unable to degrade. This is a non-degradable antigen. Now, if it was a degradable antigen, it is able to degrade it. But since it is a non-degradable antigen, now, so antigen presenting cell will not be able to degrade it. So this is antigen presenting cell this antigen presenting cell so as soon as a non-degradable antigen enters the human body the first cell which comes in contact with it is antigen presenting cell antigen presenting cell will engulf it try to degrade it but unable to degrade it because it is a non-degradable antigen antigen presenting cell will try to degrade it after engulfing it will try to degrade it but unable to degrade it so it will present this cell to the next cell who's the next cell next cell is helper th1 cell cd4 lymphocyte helper th1 not helper th2 this cell so it will give the signal to the cell that we have a non-degradable antigen in, in our body so this cell will get stimulate and on stimulation it will secrete three cytokines it will three secrete three cytokines from that name the three cytokines you have to learn the name of the three cytokines the first is interferon gamma the second is interleukin interleukin 1 and 2 and third is tnf the third is tnf so these are the three cytokines which are secreted by helper th1 what does these cytokines will do these cytokines will take one one cell out of the blood vessel you can see this is a blood vessel from the blood vessel they will take one one cell out and make a granuloma so what does interferon gamma will do interferon gamma interferon gamma will take the monocytes out so in the blood we have monocytes right or wrong in the blood we have monocytes monocytes will come out 
monocyte once out it is known as macrophage it is known as macrophage so till it is in blood it is known as monocyte once the monocyte leaves the blood it comes in the tissue it is known as macrophage so it will take out and form the macrophage interferon gamma it is forming the macrophage and it is modifying the macrophage it is increasing the size of the macrophage it is causing the nucleus as vesicular vacuoles in the cytoplasm a modified macrophage is known as epithelioid cell this one is epithelioid cell this one is epithelioid cell so a modified macrophage is known as epithelioid cell got it it's it's the epithelioid cell now multiple epithelioid cell will fuse with each other and they will form the giant cell they will form the giant cell got it they will form the giant cell so basically epithelioid cell as well as giant cell these two things are formed by interferon gamma now coming on interleukin 1 and 2 what does these will do what does the interleukin 1 and 2 will do interleukin 1 and 2 will take the t lymphocytes out not b lymphocytes only t lymphocytes out they will cause the migration and proliferation of the t lymphocytes t lymphocytes are coming and what does the uh, tnf is doing tumor necrotic factor it is taking the fibroblast out once the fibroblast are out they will start forming the collagen so this is the fibroblast migration and proliferation so at the end we are having three type of cytokines and three type of cells so the it will they will rearrange themselves and form a granuloma so the center of the granuloma is formed by epithelioid cell and giant cell they form the center the middle zone of the granuloma is formed by t lymphocyte and the outermost zone of the granuloma is formed by it is formed by uh, tnf it is formed by tumor it is formed by the fibroblast so ultimately a granuloma is formed on the next page i am showing you the diagram of a granuloma so let's draw a granuloma in the granuloma in the center we have epithelioid cells you can see some of them fuses with each other to form the giant cells so we have few of them giant cells this is the center of granuloma the middle zone is formed by the t lymphocytes so this is all t lymphocytes this is all t lymphocytes and outermost is formed by the fibroblast so this is all fibroblast what does fibroblast will do fibroblast start forming the collagen so there is fibrosis outside the granuloma this is a typical granuloma in granuloma we have three three zones center middle and outer center zone contain epithelioid cell and giant cell which are formed due to which are coming here due to interferon gamma the middle zone contain t lymphocytes which is due to interleukins 1 and 2 and outermost zone contain fibroblast which is due to t and f so this is diagram of a typical granuloma and this is known as chronic inflammation the granulomatous inflammation now the same i will show you in the form of the flow chart there are three steps so tell me the pathogenesis of granuloma formation granuloma formation is due to type 4 hypersensitivity there are three steps number 1 the first step you can see the same here all three steps are shown whatever i have drawn for you the same is shown to you you can see this is the antigen this is the antigen the antigen is coming the antigen is engulfed by antigen presenting cell the antigen is engulfed by antigen presenting cell and this antigen presenting cell is presenting to helper th1 cd4 lymphocytes cd4 lymphocyte helper th1 it is secreting three cytokines what are the three cytokines it is secreting you can see here the name of the three cytokines number 1 interferon gamma number 2 interleukins and number 3 tnf and they are taking one one cell out of the blood vessel and ultimately they are forming a granuloma you can see this is a granuloma so there are three steps the first step is engulfment by the macrophage so as soon as the non degradable antigen is coming like the mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium lepri so the antigen presenting cell will engulf it try to degrade it but fail to degrade it it is non degradable antigen so whenever they are fail to degrade it the second step they will go and activate helper cd4 helper th1 cell they will get activated and release three cytokines learn the name of the three cytokines what are the three cytokines here interferon gamma interleukin 1 and 2 and tnf these are the three cytokines the third and the last step these three cytokines will take one one cell out and make a granuloma so interferon gamma take the monocytes out convert them into macrophages and fuses the macrophages modify the macrophages to form epithelioid cell and fuses the epithelioid cell to form the giant cell so epithelioid cell and giant cells are formed by interferon gamma interleukin 1 is causing t cell proliferation and tnf is causing fibroblast proliferation so this will form the center of granuloma this will form the middle zone of granuloma and this will form the outermost zone of the granuloma so this is a typical granuloma in front of you please see the three step the first step is you all can see what is the first step the first step is engulfment by the apc second step is activation of cd4 helper th1 lymphocyte and third step is secretion of the three type of the cytokines and ultimately they will form the granuloma so learn the three steps so if the pathogenesis is coming in your exam you have to draw the diagram and write the three step the first step is engulfment by apc the second step the second step is activation of uh, cd4 helper th1 cell 
and third step is release of three type of cytokines and they are recruiting one one cell and ultimately the end result is granuloma so draw the three flow charts here in your exam along with the well labeled this diagram that is the pathogenesis now tell me the definition of granuloma can you define granuloma granuloma is a structure it is seen in chronic inflammation it's a focus in which the macrophages are transformed into epithelioid cell and they form the center in the center appreciate the macrophages along with the giant cell uh, some of the macrophages some of the i mean the macrophages get uh, modified into epithelioid cell some of the epithelioid cell fuses together to form the giant cells you can appreciate the giant cells also the collar is formed by two cells t lymphocytes t lymphocytes and fibroblasts they are forming the collar so this is the definition now there are two type of granulomas this is a typical granuloma known as hard granuloma or hard tubercle hard granuloma or hard tubercle sometimes at the center there is caseous necrosis at the center there is caseous necrosis i taught you the five type of necrosis here there is caseous necrosis at the center so this granuloma is known as soft granuloma or soft tubercle so there are two types of granuloma what are the two types of granulomas there is hard granuloma and there is soft granuloma hard granuloma is hard tubercle and soft granuloma is soft tubercle so that is the two types of granulomas are there okay the two type of granulomas now this is the microscopy of the granuloma in typical microscopy of the granuloma you can see the center is formed by the epithelioid cells the center is formed by the epithelioid cells along with some of the giant cells appreciate some of the giant cells okay surrounded by the middle zone the middle zone is formed by the t lymphocytes i told you this is the middle zone formed by the t lymphocytes and outermost zone is formed by the fibroblast and in the center sometimes there is caseous necrosis so this is the structure of granuloma you have to draw it so draw the pathogenesis draw the types draw the definition i mean you have to draw the diagram in each of them write the definition and write the microscopy now coming on types of giant cells giant cells are there now how many types of giant cells are there there are four type of giant cells foreign body giant cells langhans giant cell totten giant cell and giant cell in the tumor this is foreign body this is langhans this is totten and this is giant cells in the tumor so one by one we will be looking at them these are the four types of the giant cells so what is foreign body giant cell foreign body giant cells are the giant cells in which the nucleus you can see this is the cell now multiple nucleus are there in all of them in all of them there are multiple nucleus that's why they are giant cells that's why they all are giant cells right when foreign body giant cells the nucleus is uh, scatteredly arranged anywhere randomly arranged anywhere in the cytoplasm the nucleus are arranged or they are scattered everywhere in the cytoplasm there is no fixed pattern so that is foreign body giant cell in langhans you can see like this in langhans langhans giant cell langhans it's not langerhan it's langhans giant cell there is a particular pattern so you can see this is the cell so the nucleus is either present in the form of a peripheral two third ring at the periphery the ring the the, the, the nucleus is present forming a two third ring it is known as horseshoe pattern or it is present in the two poles north pole or south pole it is known as polar pattern so either horseshoe pattern or polar pattern so that is langhans giant cell in the totten giant cell you can see this is the cell this is the nucleus of the cell so multiple nucleus which are there so they are arranged in the form of a ring forming a circular structure this is not a nucleus it's forming a circular structure by multiple nucleus so in totten the multiple nucleus are forming a ring like structure okay and in the cytoplasm there is vacuole in the cytoplasm vacuoles are there this is totten giant cell and along with that we have giant cells in the various tumors like uh, anaplastic tumor giant cell is present in um, giant cell tumor of the of the bone reed strunbuck cell is present in hodgkin's lymphoma likewise so there are osteoclastic giant cell is also seen in giant cell of the bone so these are the various tumor giant cells got it so foreign body giant cells here the nucleus is scattered throughout the cytoplasm langhans giant cell here the nucleus is present at the periphery forming a two third ring horseshoe ring or they are arranged at the two poles and totten giant cells here the multiple nucleus are forming a ring like structure and there are vacuoles in the cytoplasm so that is the types of the giant cells can we draw it and can we revise it what are the three type of the giant cells the fourth one is the giant cells in the tumor so the first one is the foreign body giant cell the second is langhans giant cell not langerhans and third is totten totten giant cell so can you tell me the diagram so in foreign body giant cell the nucleus is arranged haphazardly in the cytoplasm anywhere in langhans giant cell it is arranged at the periphery forming a two third ring either at the periphery forming a two third ring or they are arranged at the poles they are arranged at the poles like the north pole like the south pole like this or in the totten giant cell the multiple nucleus they will form a ring like structure at the center and there is vacuoles in the cytoplasm 
in the cytoplasm multiple vacuoles are there it's like this got it so that is the thing now coming on the types of the granuloma there are two types of granuloma caseating granuloma and non caseating granuloma i told you hard and soft so this one is caseating because caseous necrosis is present at the center and this one is non caseating because caseous necrosis is not present at the center so caseating granuloma is the soft granuloma and non caseating granuloma is the hard granuloma so here you can see caseous necrosis is present at the center you can appreciate and here no caseous necrosis is present at the center it's a granuloma only so learn the examples tb comes in both the example tuberculosis in tuberculosis we get caseating granuloma also non caseating granuloma also along with the tb histoplasma syphilis and coccidiomycosis are seen in caseating granuloma tb sarcoidosis and hodgkins lymphoma these are the examples of non caseating granuloma so that is the caseating and non caseating granuloma coming on naked there are two special type of granuloma naked granuloma and sealed granuloma what is naked granuloma now in the structure of the granuloma i told you the center is formed by epithelial cells and giant cells the middle zone is formed by the t lymphocytes and the outermost zone is formed by fibroblast in the entire structure there is no neutrophils normally neutrophils are absent normally but naked granuloma is a special granuloma in which in which uh, naked granuloma is a special granuloma Uh, in which uh, the surrounding rim of the mononuclear cells is absent the mononuclear cells surrounding rim is absent it's only epithelial cells and giant cells only epithelial cells and giant cells are there the surrounding rim of the t lymphocytes as well as fibroblast is absent that's why it is known as naked it don't have the cover it don't have the collar it have only center so it is seen in sarcoidosis and ciliate granuloma is a special granuloma in which neutrophils are also present what is known as ciliate ciliate means star shaped ciliate means star the meaning of the ciliate is star so can you see the granuloma star shaped granuloma it's a typical granuloma seen like a star shaped granuloma it is known as ciliate granuloma it is seen in cat scratch disease and lymphogranuloma vanarum cat scratch disease and lymphogranuloma vanarum finally coming on the examples of granulomatous inflammation so among the bacteria there are eight examples among the fungus there are four examples among the virus among the parasites there is only one example and in the miscellaneous we are having four five so total there are 17 to 18 examples you have to learn in the bacteria the examples is tb leprosy syphilis granuloma inguinale brucella cat scratch disease tularemia and glanders learn the causative bacteria also this is a disease so tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis leprosy is caused by mycobacterium leprosy syphilis is caused by trypanosoma pallidum granuloma inguinale is caused by uh granuloma inguinal is caused by chlamydia donovani and uh, brucella is caused by brucellosis is caused by brucella abortus cat scratch disease is caused by co cocobacillus tularemia is caused by pancinella tolerances and glandus is caused by actinobacillus malai so you have to learn the causative agent also among the fungus the four fungus is actinomycosis blastomycosis cryptomycosis coccidiomycosis only one parasite shows granulomatous inflammation cystosomiasis and in the miscellaneous there is sarcoidosis chronic crohn's disease silicosis berylliosis foreign body granuloma so you usually get a short question in which they ask you to write down five example or 10 examples of chronic granulomatous inflammation so you should divide them bacterial fungal parasitic and miscellaneous so that's all about chronic inflammation or granulomatous inflammation if you are getting long question write everything if you are getting short question write specifically what is asked so in the introduction write down the definition of chronic inflammation we have three things takes place simultaneously inflammation injury and repair three things takes place simultaneously in the pathogenesis of the granuloma write down the three steps and draw the diagram how does it occur in the definition write down it's a focus the center of which is formed by uh, the center of which is formed by epithelial cell and giant cell the middle zone is formed by t lymphocyte and outermost zone is formed by the fibroblast that is the definition as well as structure you have to draw it types of giant cell there are three main types foreign body giant cell langhans giant cell and totten draw the diagram and describe their nucleus types of granuloma write down the two uh, conventional types of granuloma that is hard and soft that is caseating and non caseating caseating and, and write down two special types that is steelid granuloma which is star shaped seen in cat scratch disease and lymphogranuloma vanarum and um, naked granuloma which is seen in sarcoidosis naked granuloma that is a special type of granuloma and in the end write down the examples as many as you can in your university exam 
eight of them are bacterial i told you four of them are fungal one is parasitic and many miscellaneous are there so write down maximum examples if you are writing everything under following headings in a beautiful manner with with the flow charts with diagrams you are going to get full marks in your university exam that's all about chronic inflammation i hope you all got it so please check all long question short question very short question along with the mcqs of this topic given in the notes section as well as question bank section so that you will become confident that you know all the questions based on this topic i hope it will work in your university exam thank you